so good that you can go all the way to the third wide receiver listed on their depth chart and you're still getting a like a good NFL player a good NFL wide receiver so in this tier list we've got two teams and by the way this one I have gone through and ranked all of these tiers in order so as I reveal it that is in proper sequential order of who I think is the best team and then the next best team within each of the tiers which is something that I haven't been doing, but this time I decided to do it. So this is my definitive tier list power ranking of wide receiver trios in the NFL. And at number one, this should come as no surprise, we've got the Houston Texans. This is a trio made up of Nico Collins, Stephon Diggs, and Dank Dell. It doesn't really get any deeper than that. You've got Nico Collins, who had his breakout here posted solid wide receiver one stats across the board just phenomenal in it the, as a tandem with rookie quarterback cj stroud and yeah he is i think the wide receiver one on this team going forward is an absolute dog then we've got stefan diggs old wide receiver one of the bills makes his way down to houston texas in a trade and you know i think even though he is older even though the tail end of last season wasn't that good. He is still a very good wide receiver and a wide receiver one in terms of talent. Like, you could put him on a, a multitude of teams and he would be their best, their best wide receiver. But on this team, he does fall to number two. And he's a very good number two. Uh, if you can have Stefan Diggs as your number two wide receiver, you are eating. And then finally, you've got Tank Dell. Tank Dell, phenomenal rookie year. He was posting some great stats, um, just very productive up until he broke his leg, but even with that, he's been battling with numerous injuries. He got shot during the offseason, and despite all of those setbacks, he was able to make full recoveries in, across everything, and he scored his first touchdown in the preseason two weeks ago, so even though Dang Dell, yes, he saw some some hardships in his rookie year, the second half of his rookie year. I think what we saw was very promising, and to have Tank Dell as a wide receiver three is exciting if you're a Texans fan. I think that this is the best wide receiver group in the NFL, and there's there's no arguing it. So that concludes our top of the list. Then our second team in the three deep tier is maybe maybe a stretch to some folks, but I've got the Seattle Seahawks, the Seattle Seahawks of DK Metcalf, uh, Tyler Lockett, and JSN Jackson, Jackson Smith, and Chigba. These three, I think, the talent they have across one another, even though Tyler Lockett has not made a Pro Bowl, JSN is still young and developing, I think that these are three very good wide receivers to have on one team. And honestly, the reason why they didn't do as well as they could have last year is because of Shane Waldron. They, they're deep. I mean, you look at JSN's college highlight reel, it is phenomenal. And then, yeah, year one, it wasn't a buzzed year. Like, he still had a solid year. He didn't do as well as some of the other rookies. But in terms of fantasy production, he still put up 150 points. And then you go to DK Metcalf, clear cut wide receiver one, no question about it. Tyler Lockett, it doesn't matter how old he gets, he refuses to be irrelevant. I'm like, ever since Doug Baldwin has retired, this man has gone and put up a consistent season after season of good football. Like, he is extremely dependable, and I think he's just, like, constantly underrated. He makes some of the best catches you'll ever see. Great route runner, and 
receiver 2, the depth chart just falls off the face of the earth at wide receiver 3, and that is not the case with either of these teams, so... Yeah, even though you might think that the Seahawks aren't as top-heavy in their first two wide receivers, I think across all three, there's not many teams doing it like them. And so with that, we conclude our three-deep first tier, and we get to move into our second tier on this tier list, which is the two-and-a-half-man category. Now, I named this the way that I did because I think that this is a tier full of teams that have two wide receiver one worthy talents. The top two wide receivers on these teams are, are very productive, very talented, and they deserve respect on their own. Yes, they have been put in a tandem because of good general managing, but realistically, either of the top two guys probably could shine as their own top dog wide receiver one if they were given the opportunity, and some of them have. And then the reason why it's called two and a half men is because you have the top two wide receivers and then the third wide receiver, there's like a significant cutback in talent. It's not like the three deep category where your third wide receiver is going to be someone that you're all that excited about. Yes, they are serviceable. Yes, they could be good. Maybe they're young. They haven't played a snap in the NFL yet, but at least until this point, you can't say that your third wide receiver is like productive. So, starting off this category, this tier, we have the Chicago Bears. Now, this is probably making perfect sense to all of you. DJ Moore, was very good on the Panthers first year with the Bears, posted just as good numbers. I think he's another one of those guys that, like, consistently year in, year out, is productive, uh, does his job. He doesn't get all of the, like, fame and glory, but he is always up to the task, and he posts good numbers all the time, so a clearly established wide receiver one. And then the Bears trade for Keenan Allen, who is... Yeah, I mean, at this point in his career, it's hard to say just because he's getting up there with age, but he's better than DJ Moore. He's, like, had a better career than DJ Moore. Um, and so, yeah, you have two certified wide receiver one pro bowl level talents on your team. And then that's two men. The half man comes in with Roma Duns, who is a rookie wide receiver out of Washington. And, uh, yes, every... Every bit of me says that Ramadans will have a good season. I think that he is a very talented prospect, and I'm looking forward to seeing him play on this team. But how can I put the Bears in the three-deep category when one of their top three wide receivers has never taken a snap for the NFL? Like, it's not logical. It's not reasonable for me to rank them that highly when Odons has not made a name for himself in our league yet. I... I think next year, yeah, they'll definitely move up a category. But for right now, we do have to, you know, pump the brakes on or don't see how he develops. And I don't know, it could be one of those situations where, like, I'm also vouching for him, like, the same way I was vouching for GSN. I think that Odunza is very talented, and it makes sense that he got drafted as high as he did. But the Bears now are dealing with Shane Waldron, and he, he might stunt his growth as the wide receiver three. He might prioritize the two guys that are more so in their prime and established dominant wide receivers. So, if that happens, it happens, but very talented wide receiver trio right here. And then, moving into our second team in the two and a half men category, we have the Los Angeles Rams. Now, the Rams, I think, are spot this year. I think that Cooper Cup getting back from injury, having all that time to heal up, it will bode well for him. He, obviously in his 2021 season, the best wide receiver season that we've probably seen with the triple crown and everything, and then starting the next season, he was very productive, but that got halted with injury, so when he was on the field, it was as good as the previous year, but he just wasn't on the field as much. And then last year, though he did return, he was still dealing with some lingering injuries. So, if we can see him be fully healthy for a year, I think that he still has, like, very good football left in him. Then, obviously, you've got Bukunakua, um, 
earlier in the 
five season, I'm pretty sure. Uh, transgender sign. But then, <laughs> uh, bro retired. He retired and he's not in the league anymore, so they're wide receiver for death. I'm pretty sure their wide receiver three on ESPN right now is Paris Campbell, who <laughs> he's had his stints on a couple of different teams, but he's never really panned out. And so, like, yeah, clear drop off in the wide receiver three talent pool for the Eagles, but their top two is nice. And I think that this is a good spot for them. Don't mind if I do. Pro Bowl 
postseason that he had, and that was with the best quarterback. So now with Baker Mayfield, we have to like kind of temper our expectations and see is it really all that realistic? I'm gonna rest my hands. Is it really all that realistic for him to get to that point again? I'd like to believe that he does better this year, but I don't really know. And then, yeah, as far as Jalen McMillan, he, I think he was drafted a lot later than um, Ramadan's and Ricky Pearsall, so I know a lot less about him, and he could be good, but he hasn't played in the NFL yet, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give him any props. Uh, but I'll, as a rookie, I'll, I'll give him the half man status. After that, we move into our one, two, three, four, five, seven, our seventh team in the two and a half men category, and this would be the Cincinnati Bengals. The Bengals have a wide receiver trio made up of Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, and Jermaine Burton. Jermaine Burton is the third guy. Um, Jamar Chase into the league three years ago was very productive in his rookie year. Um, you could say outdoing his uh, LSU counterpart Justin Jefferson for best rookie year at that time. And then you've got his sophomore year, which was a bit worse. Uh, obviously, it was hard for part of that. And so his numbers were down. And, but even then, still over a thousand yards. And then here's three with Joe Burrow going down it wasn't going to be as explosive as it could have been, but he still had a very good year. And then, T. Higgins on the other hand. T. Higgins, I do think that he is a like wide receiver one type talent. I really wanted the Patriots to go out and get him. I don't know why they didn't or they couldn't, but either way, he has had some very dominant plays on his highlight reel where he's most guys he in times where Jamar Chase has been out, D. Higgins has done just fine. Um, he is a bona fide wide receiver. One type talent. Like, if you put him on the right team, I think that he could definitely eat as the wide receiver one. But of all the co-stars so far listed on this tier, he definitely had the worst season last year. I think two years ago, I would have placed this duo a bit higher. Um, three years ago, really. After Jamar Chase's rookie year, I would have been so high on this duo, but after seeing it, T. Higgins did have, like, a, an okay season. I don't think that, like, he can't get back to where he was, but I am docking them a little bit in this ranking just for T. Higgins' mediocre season last year. And then, Jermaine Burton, I've heard a lot of good things about him in camp so far. He's developing a rapport with Joe Burrow in training camp, and seen some nice catches from him, but we'll have to see if he actually beats out, um, I think his name is Trenton Irwin, uh, wide receiver three. I feel like he, it's his, he can do it. We'll see if he actually does. Uh, but yeah. And then our eighth and final wide receiver trio in the two and a half men category is going to be that of the Tennessee Titans. Now, just hear me out on this one. I know that these guys, obviously, this is the worst trio in this category, but I do believe that it belongs up here, because number one, you've got DeAndre Hopkins. Number two, you've got Calvin Ridley. And number three, you've got Tyler Boyd. Now, when Tyler Boyd was on the Bengals, people were eating that trio up, saying they were three deep. It was three very serviceable wide receivers. And yes, I think that Tyler Boyd has had some seasons where he is productive and good. I don't think that we've seen that from him as much lately. But like, look at the other wide receiver three talents in this pool, and Tommy's not there with them. Like, you've got Tutu Allo, Ramadans, um, Odell, whoever wide receiver three on the Eagles will be Paris Campbell, um, Jermaine Burton, Jalen McMillan, like, you've got a bunch of rookies and a bunch of, like, okay guys, and I think that Tyler Boyd does fit amongst that mold, and then these other two, yes, when you think of, like, wide 
crazy for once, they might not jump out to the front of your brain. DeAndre Hopkins, obviously, in the past, he was. And I think that, like, though it's not the same as when he was younger, I don't think that's necessarily his fault. I think that he still has at least one good year left, um, as long as Will Levis can get him the ball. And I think that Will Levis will. And so, DeAndre Hopkins, I'm not quite ready to write him off. I don't think that he's at the same level that he was. He's not like Devontae Adams. Devontae Adams, I think even going into this next year, I still have as much respect for Devontae Adams as I've ever had. DeAndre Hopkins, yes, I think that he has like gotten slightly worse when he was on the Texans, it was great. And then when he went to the Cardinals, it was great. And then with the Titans, the Titans are kind of where players go to get washed. Like, end of the career, you don't expect them to have their best years. It's really only like CJ Duque and Derek Henry who have had their best, most impressive years on the Titans. And then a lot of the other big names you can think of, oh well, what was it, like Randall Cunningham? I think that he had a good tenure with the Titans, but a lot of these other like star type players that come to the Titans, they're, by the time they get there, they're either washed or they somehow magically start being washed, and I, I don't know, they just have bad luck, I guess, and so, you've seen those photos of like Randy Moss in the Titans jersey, I think you'll know what I'm talking about, um, or Julio Jones when he was on the Titans, things like that. I don't think that Diop is washed at this moment. I think that he's still good. And then they spent all that money getting Calvin Ridley. Calvin Ridley did have a very solid year last year. He didn't play the year before because of like sports gambling stuff. The year before that, I think that he was injured, but like he's had good years in the past. And I think that last year he still did put up like wide receiver one numbers. And so between DeAndre Hopkins and Calvin Ridley, I do think that you do have like wide receiver one type talent. They're like fringe wide receiver one. Uh, compared to some of these other guys, but I do think that, like, this duo is talented enough with a solid enough number three that they belong in this group. They're the weakest of this group. They're the oldest of this group, but I think that they do make it into this two and a half men category, and that's just my own opinion. So yeah, that wraps up our second tier and the seven tier tier list with the two and a half men category. So after that, my voice is like whistling. I hope that's not too annoying, but yeah. Uh, after that, we move into our third category in this tier list, which will be the Batman and Robin tier. All right, so I was feeling a way bit tired, so I had to lower the table. And I'm sitting down again now. But as I was saying, we move into our third tier in this tier list, which is the Batman and Robin category. And what I mean by Batman and Robin is basically this team has two wide receivers that I think are of notable cal caliber. Um, the wide receiver one is like a distinguished wide receiver one type talent. And then the wide receiver two, they play like a supplementary sidekick role. They're not a wide receiver one talent of their own. They are, you know, talented. Um, contributors and they could maybe ascend to that level or maybe they're just very good at their role um so yeah it's just like a a main guy and a lesser guy um that forms this duo uh two guys of not the same caliber usually um and then the reason why it doesn't address the third person on the depth chart is because like either they haven't played or because it it's like a, a no name truly like they there are nobodies um uh, respectfully humbly um and so yeah with the two and a half men category it was like two wide receiver one type talents now it's like a wide receiver one a wide receiver two and then a, a guy that is has either never played or is a no one so in this category, we've got one, two, three, four, five teams. Five teams total. So, starting off with the first team in the Batman and Robin tier, we've got the Minnesota Vikings. And so, in the wide receiver one, you've got 
Justin Jefferson. And the wide receiver two, you've got Jordan Addison. And I'm going to be completely honest, wide receiver three, I have never seen this dude's face before in my life. I looked up who he was, but it was like over an hour ago at this point, and I think I've already forgotten his name. It's like, uh... Bowman, Noman, something like that. Norman, Norman Beaumont. Um, he, he's got like the most generic face as well. I, I don't know, he looks so familiar, yet I don't know who he is. And I honestly have never seen this guy play uh, before. And I don't know, I don't know what that says about me, but I, Vikings wide receiver three, I, I truly do not know who you are. Um, and yeah, well, so the reason why the Vikings are in the Batman and Robin category because obviously you have Justin Jefferson, who, in my opinion, when healthy, is the best wide receiver in football. So obviously Batman, and then Jordan Addison, who I think is a very adequate uh, side sidekick, um, number two complimentary wide receiver two piece. He does not compare to Justin Jefferson's talent. I don't think that Jordan Addison did anything one that would make me think that he is a wide receiver one type down, but he was good. I would say that he was good, and I liked how he developed. And then, yeah, this is a team where you don't even look at the wide receiver three, uh, hence Batman and Robin. Then, moving into the second tier in this category, we sorry, then second team in this tier or category, you've got the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, Dallas Cowboys, very similar situation. Wide receiver one, one of the best in the league, and CD Lamb. Then coming in at number two, you've got Brandon Cooks, very well established NFL career, had this long streak of 1,000 yard seasons in a row. Uh, even though he was getting traded around like uh, Larsa Pippen, he truly like was able to produce anywhere. And yeah, that has come to an end in his last two seasons with the Houston Texans and the Dallas Cowboys. Texas has not been as kind to Brandon Cooks. And even though he's on the older side, I would still give him that sidekick nod. I, I do still respect Brandon Cooks. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt that he can still play that number two wide receiver role. Um, I don't know how much of a step he's lost, but he was a very good deep there earlier. And I think if you have CD Lamb, CD Lamb is going to garner so much attention in like almost double coverage. I think that will still allow um, Brandon Cooks to get free. And then, yeah, looking at wide receiver three, Jalen Dolbert. Um, I have seen Jalen Dolbert play. It's nothing that impressive. He is a wide receiver three type guy. And if CD Lamb does not get this contract situation figured out with the Cowboys. The Cowboys wide receiver room is in shambles. They have no one really. Like I know that Brandon Cooks is there, but at this day and age, him drawing the top cornerback from another team, Cowboys are cooked. Uh, but yeah, I think that sums up this team pretty well. After that, we move into our third team in the Batman and Robin category. And here is where I've had where I've placed the Las Vegas Raiders. Uh, in the Las Vegas Raiders wide receiver trio, we've got Devontae Adams playing the wide receiver one role, Jacoby Myers playing the wide receiver two role, and I must say that he had a very impressive season last year, uh, starting up the year. I feel like he was impressing people. He was taking such a number of targets and receptions away from Devontae Adams. It was like, who is this guy? What, uh, what is going on here? And, yeah, it was very impressive. You know, I obviously have seen a lot of Jacoby Myers play uh, with my own eyes as a Patriots fan. And, yeah, when he was on the team, uh, early on he was making that connection with Brady. Then he had a... Uh, I'm pretty sure he was still there when Brady was there. And then Cam Newton, I think he was... Had a great year with Cam Newton, really. Um... really doubting. I I don't know for sure if he was there or when Brady was there. I want to say, I really want to say that his rookie year he was there and Brady was there. And then with Cam Newton, he kind of broke out once Julian Edelman was down and then he kind of just stayed in this like, yeah, he's like a wide receiver two level talent, but because he's on the Patriots, he's playing the wide receiver one role. Uh, even with Mac Jones early on, he was pretty good. He was always like a very dependable wide receiver guy. Like he played quarterback, transitioned to wide receiver, kind of like Julian Edelman. And I liked him. I really dug him. I thought that he was cool. Uh, I can 
wide receiver two, and I'm very happy for Jacoby Myers. And then at the wide receiver three position, they've got Trey Tucker, and though the name sounds familiar, I don't recognize his face. I don't know if I've ever seen him play. Um, and so, yeah, the, the talent just shoots off the board at that wide receiver three range, and that's why, yet again, this is the Batman and Robin conversation, because the, the team's listed in this tier, their third receiver is just not of the same caliber. And then, moving into our fourth team in the Batman and Robin tier, we've got the Carolina Panthers with their revamped wide receiver room. So, in the wide receiver one position, you've got Deontay Johnson, who they acquired off the Steelers. Then, at the wide receiver two, you've got Adam Thielen, and I think that Adam Thielen had a very nice year last year. Um, with the Vikings, he had that one year where he won in I don't know, I, I think it was like the randomest dominant run that I've seen out of a player in the NFL. It was like Adam Thielen with Stephon Diggs in that Vikings era when they were winning with Chase Keenum. Bro was putting up 100 yards a week for no reason. And yeah, his production kind of dipped in the following years. The Vikings ended up releasing him, but he had a great year for like to expectations, his year was very good and commanded a lot of targets out of a rookie, Bryce Young. And so, yeah, last year he was putting up, like, at least fantasy wise, wide receiver one numbers. And I think that he is more suited for this wide receiver two type position behind Deontay Johnson. But with these two guys, they have a very nice duo. And then in the wide receiver three category, I wouldn't even say that this is untalented or nobody. It's just the fact that he is a rookie. Uh, you've got Xavier Leggett, a rookie wide receiver out of Ole Miss. He has that DK Metcalf, AJ Brown type build. He has the gnarliest southern accent, if you've ever heard him speak. Um, and yeah, I, I look forward to seeing what he can do. Uh, but yeah, I can't really place these guys any higher because I think that uh, Thielen is not on the same. I do think it's like a wide receiver one, wide receiver two dynamic. And then with Leggett, we just haven't seen anything, so I can't place these guys any higher. And then finally, our fifth and final team in the Batman and Robin category is uh, the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, the Kansas City Chiefs, I think, are more unique than the other teams in this list because it's not... It's not exactly like a wide receiver one and a wide receiver two. I think that you have two guys that, like, on this team, they are interchangeable. I, I wouldn't know, really, when it's all said and done, how the depth chart is going to pan out. I don't think that either of these guys are established wide receiver one talents, but they're both, like, slightly better than a wide receiver two. Um, <coughs> and so, like... Hollywood Brown, yeah, he has bounced around the league a little bit with the Ravens and then the Cardinals, but when he's healthy, he is pretty productive, and he's got that speed, which we know is good if you're on the Chiefs offense, and then Rasheed Rice had a very impressive rookie campaign, you know, behind Bukanakua, I would say that he probably had the second best rookie year of any of the rookie wide receivers, and if it wasn't for those car crashes and whatever nonsense he did in the offseason, he would be, like, a very exciting prospect heading into year two. And so they bring in Hollybrook Brown. They have Rasheed Rice year two. Pending suspension or not, we'll have to see. Uh, but those are two, like, solidly defined guys. Like, I don't know, compared to last year, heading into the year you had, what... I guess Val, this scantling, you had Kadiri Stoney, uh, Sky Moore, these guys were like, really not it, and now you have Rishi Rice, who was, he emerged out of that group from the Ashes, and then Hollywood Brown, I think, is going to be good for the Chiefs, so, these two guys, and then, at that wide receiver three spot, you have the new rookie, First round pick, Savior Worthy. We'll have to see how he works out, but yeah, uh, this, it's not a 
exactly that and it Robin it's I'm trying to think like what's a what's a duo what's a like less why she do it's like Nightwing and Nightwing basically instead of Batman and Robin uh, I think you're basically as I was trying to say this is not Batman and Robin Marquis Brown and Rasheed Rice are Dick Grayson and Damian Wayne anyhow with that we are done done with that dear that category we can move on into our next category uh this is tier four of our seven tier tier list and this one is titled one man show uh and basically what i mean by this is you've got one wide receiver one that's leading this receiver group and then you've got i think a significant drop off in talent and it's not going to be like batman and robin where the wide receiver two is necessarily all that good uh like they're they're fine but they don't really pop off the page they're more like two wide receiver threes um and so it's the first person that sticks out like a sore thumb in the talent pool of their wide receiver groups so we've got one two three four five six seven eight eight teams in the one man show tier and first up we've got Detroit Lions. The Detroit Lions are led by Amon Ra St. Brown, clear wide receiver one, but then you drop off to Jamison Williams as the wide receiver two, and at the wide receiver three position, I've got Cliff Raymond, and I think that as much as I want to believe that Jamison Williams has talent and he has the ability to break out and live up to his draft price. We just haven't seen anything from him thus far in his NFL career. All he's really done is been hurt and been suspended, and then he's had a couple of solid games here and there, but nothing that warrants him being like a Robin-type figure to Amon Ross St. Brown, whereas Amon Ross St. Brown, he is truly like the star of the show on that offense, and yeah, Clay Freeman is just, he is there. I think that I would have been a little more high on this group with Josh Reynolds. Josh Reynolds was a bit better than the other two guys, I would say, but Josh Reynolds departed and went to some other teams. So I think the Broncos, uh, but yeah, that is the best group in the one-man show category. Number two in the one-man show category, we've got the New York Jets, the New York Jets trio, led by third year wide receiver Garrett Wilson, followed by Mike Williams of the Los Angeles Chargers formerly, and then you've got Alan Lazard, who is um, an old wide receiver from the Green Bay Packers, also back when Aaron Rodgers was throwing there, so he's kind of like Aaron Rodgers' hand-selected dude, I don't know, it was very weird last year, Rodgers joined the team, complained about the offense in Green Bay, and then brought over like nearly the entire offense from Green Bay, it's just weird. Um, but yeah, I think like Garrett Wilson, one offensive rookie of the year for a reason, has been able to do very impressive things with exceptionally bad quarterback play, and he should be on the rise. But even if he's not on the rise, I think that he's just very talented young wide receiver, Claire wide receiver one, and then Mike Williams and Alan Lazard. Maybe if it was three years ago, I would be saying that Mike Williams is Robin, but really, I don't think that he's done anything recently that would cause me to think that he's like a, he's a game-changing guy, like he's, he's okay, he's, he's fine, good, good at contested catches, I think, uh, I don't know if he's still good at them, but that's what I remember him being good at, and Lazard, Lazard is like, the nasses of this wide receiver group. He's just there because Aaron Rodgers wants him to be there. Alan Lazard is, yeah, he's had a couple of nice moments, but it's just their friendship. He's there out of friendship, and he, he'll do fine, but if he did not have Aaron Rodgers throwing to him, I don't think that we would have ever learned Alan Lazard's name. Then our third team in the one-man show category, Cleveland Browns. The Cleveland Browns have a trio of wide 
receivers led by Amari Cooper and then followed by, in my personal opinion, I think the order is going to be uh, Elijah Moore and then Jerry Judy. Um, so yeah, Amari Cooper. Anywhere that he's been, he's put up numbers. Uh, Raiders, Cowboys, now Browns. Solidly wide receiver number, wide receiver one numbers, uh, year in and year out. And, yeah, uh, it's just been, like, productive from a young age, came out of Alabama, has, has never really disappointed, in my opinion, um, kind of one of those underrated dudes, and I want to show him some respect, I do think that he is running the show, that without him, that wide receiver talent group is a lot less impressive, but with Amari Cooper, I, I like what they have. And then with Elijah Moore, you know, he was doing some things in New York. Then Garrett Wilson came in, stole the show. Elijah Moore did not like that, requested the trade. I think that he's talented. I think that he can do some things. I don't think that he is doing anything to submit himself as like a wide receiver to talent, but I think that he has flashes of uh, greatness. I, I think that he didn't really pan out the way that he was hoping for, that some other people were hoping for, but he's definitely, like, a guy I wouldn't mind having as a wide receiver 2-3, um, on my team. And then Jerry Judy. Jerry Judy has not lived up to that thus far in the NFL. Uh, I know he's supposed to be a phenomenal route runner, also another guy out of Alabama. Uh, and I was very high on Jerry Judy coming into the league, and he just never really got it going in uh, Denver. And so now the Browns signed him to a giant contract, and we'll see. Hopefully they can get something out of him that makes that contract worth it. If not, it'll be one of the more bustling wide receiver signings of recent years. Um, but yeah, it's not a bad core. If they all play up to their potential, it could be a very nice trio. But I think that Elijah Moore and Jerry Judy just, they haven't really lived up to the hype as much as they would have hoped to. Then, moving into our fourth team in the one-man show category, we have the Indianapolis Colts. So this is a trio that is headlined with wide receiver Michael Pittman, followed up by Josh Downs and Adonai Mitchell. Adana Mitchell being a rookie wide receiver that was just drafted. Uh, Josh Downs, I think he was a rookie last year. I'm not 100% certain. Um, and he had a solid year. I don't think that he did anything too impressive. I don't think that he did anything bad. Uh, he was he was productive. He helped contribute to the team. And he had a solid year. And then you get to figure out how Adonai Mitchell fits into the picture. Spend a Honestly, not that high of a draft pick on him. I thought that he was going to get drafted higher than he did end up getting drafted. I feel like he could be potentially a steal. We'll see if the slip made sense or if the slip is going to have teams regretting letting him fall that far. Uh, but I heard good things about Adonai Mitchell before he entered the league. And yeah, I can't put him any higher. I do think that Michael Pittman is like... After last year, he is a wide receiver one, whereas these other guys, they're just like, they're still making a name for themselves. This wide receiver trio in, as a whole is very young, so we have to give them time to develop and see what happens, but, you know, uh, one-man show, at least until further notice. And then, kind of a similar situation, heading into the next wide receiver trio, we've got the Washington Commanders. Where the Washington Commanders, their wide receiver one is Terry McLaurin. He is the one man of the one man show. And then with your um, complimentary pieces, you've got John Dodson, John Dodson, and Luke McCaffrey. Thank you to, I think it was Skip Picks, uh, for reminding me about Luke McCaffrey. I know you got some flack in the comments because people did not understand you were talking about Luke McCaffrey and not Christian McCaffrey. 
making some noise. He has been bubbling up in the practices before camp. I heard that he was turning heads and impressing people. And so even though he like barely made it onto the team, I think that he will make it onto the final roster and be that wide receiver three. Uh, Jahan Dotson still making a name for himself. I know that he has had some impressive plays and people have talked him up, but I don't think that he has really established himself as like a dependable wide receiver two guy yet. And then Terry McLaurin, yeah, he is, he has a wide receiver one. He just is playing with bad quarterback play, so we don't see him higher up, but he, he's that dude. He is like that. After that, we move into our one, two, three, four, five, sixth, sixth team in the one-man show category, and this would be the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Steelers, they have a trio of George Pickens, Van Jefferson, and the newly picked up Roman Wilson. Shout out to whoever reminded me of that as well in the comments of the last video. Um, I actually completely missed this. I did not see that they picked up Roman Wilson. Um, somehow it passed me by, I guess. Uh, and so I was saying that Calvin Austin was the wide receiver three on this team. But yeah, I think that Roman Wilson could go and grab that spot from him. But with that being said, you've got a rookie and then you've got Van Jefferson and Van Jefferson, though like, though I think that he is a very respectable guy. I think I have a positive outlook on him just because of the Rams Super Bowl run and him winning the Super Bowl and then immediately rushing off to go be with his uh, wife who was in labor. Um, I think possibly about him, but in terms of his football play, I don't remember the last like Van Jefferson type game that I saw. I know in that playoff series uh, for the Rams, he was pretty solid. Since then, I don't know as much. Uh, whereas George Pickens, yeah, I do think that George Pickens had a pretty solid last two years, and I think that like compared to the other wide receiver ones on this list, he is less dis less established. Uh, he's not at the same level as Amon Ra, definitely, or Garrett Wilson, or Amari Cooper, uh, Michael Pittman, and Terry McLaurin, I think, are at, like, slightly lower stance, where Drew Pickens could be, like, elevating to that level for sure. Uh, maybe even past that. And then, yeah, uh, but for right now, I think that he has the least established wide receiver one out of these guys, but I do think that it is the George Pickens show and just random supporting cast. Then, after that, we have the Atlanta Falcons coming in at 7th on the one-man show tier, and so their one man would be Drake London. Uh, Drake London out of USC has been in the league for two years now, and he is still waiting for that breakout year. Um, and now I don't think you can really fault him for not being able to break out with the quarterback play that he has received thus far in his career. Uh, hopefully that changes. Like his ADP in fantasy is very high up, and that's because of the prospect of Kirk Cousins throwing the ball to him. We've seen what Kirk Cousins can produce as a quarterback. Um, and Rick London definitely has the talent to be like a a wide receiver one, and I think that he is much more talented than the other wide receivers on this Falcons roster. Uh, at the wide receiver two position, we've got Darnell Mooney off the Bears, and then wide receiver three, we had Rondell Moore off the Cardinals, but then uh, I think very recently he was out of practice, and he tore, uh, I want to say ACL, and so we have recently received news that he'll be out for the entire year, but for the purpose of this I don't, I don't think I saw anyone else from the Falcons depth chart listed with their headshot, so we're just going to use Rondell Moore. I think that Rondell Moore is like, is a solid, he reminds me of like Speedy Gonzalez, undersized, kind of fast, uh, nothing wrong with him, but he's just not that impressive. And then Darnell Mooney, I think people were talking him up, and he just like did not fill that wide receiver one role at all uh, on the Bears when that opportunity was given to him. And so, yeah, I don't think of either Rondell Moore or uh, Darnell Mundy as all that impressive. Like, they're fine. The, they can get the ball. But uh, Drake London is definitely, in my mind, a lot ahead of them. And then finally, the last team in the one-man show category with, uh, I want to say, the the wide receiver that has the least amount of help of any of these guys. Uh, we've got the New Orleans Saints. So on the Saints, we have our wide receiver one in 
Los Angeles Chargers. So that's all 32 teams in the NFL ranked by their wide receiver trios heading into next year. Please let me know what you think about this uh, tier list, these rankings. If you agree, if you disagree, I'm very curious to see how you guys would rank uh, the wide receiver trios. I personally feel like the way that I grouped all of these teams, I'm pretty proud of it. I originally had some of them flipped around, um, but with what I ended up with, I think that the more controversial ones are going to be like the Titans, the Seahawks, and maybe the like within each tier, the rankings, and then like the ranking of a one-man show versus teamwork makes the dream work. I think that those are kind of interchangeable. Um, the teamwork makes the dream work teams of the Packers and the Jaguars. I think that their cores would fit somewhere within the other teams. I don't think that that is like necessarily below the one-man show category, but that's just 